Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. You may know Squarespace from such websites as www.madelineolivia.co.uk. So whether you need a domain, a website, an online store, make it with Squarespace. Hello, so I have wanted to make this video ever since I started my YouTube channel because I am so, so passionate about veganism and I know that so many of you guys watching are new to it and need the information. So hopefully this video will do that. It will give you the information that you need if you're beginning to think about going vegan or if you're starting the transition to veganism. So to quote the Vegan Society, veganism is a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practical all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals for food, clothing and any other purpose. So fundamentally veganism is a plant-based diet. It means that you don't eat any meat, fish, eggs, dairy or often honey. Another element of veganism is avoiding products such as leather, fur, wool, silk and also products that have been tested on animals. Vegans also choose to avoid places where animals are kept in captivity or used for entertainment like the zoo, the races or the circus. So why go vegan? What is the point? What are all these crazy vegans going on about? I think that there are usually three main reasons why people go vegan and I'm gonna delve into them quickly here. I have written a blog post to support this video. So all of the things that I talk about in this video and all the things that I'm references and the facts and figures, they are all linked in that blog post. So I highly recommend you check it out because it's gonna be a lot more in depth than what I touch on here. So a lot of people go vegan for the health benefits. A lot of research has been done to show that animal products are harmful to our health and especially in the excess that we are consuming them today. Animal products are naturally high in cholesterol. Plant foods don't have any cholesterol. And this has been linked to heart disease, which is actually our biggest killer. They've also been shown to cause cancer, carry the highest risk of foodborne illnesses, contribute to antibiotic resistance, and as a result, meat eaters simply don't live as long as vegetarians and vegans do. The second reason lots of people go vegan and become so passionate about veganism is for the ethics. We love animals and we don't wanna be harming them. I know that for me personally, learning about the atrocities and the cruelty that's happening within the animal agriculture industry was one of the main reasons that I was spurred on to go vegan and why I've stayed vegan for now four and a half years. Animals feel pain, they feel suffering, they deserve life and they deserve freedom. They are sentient beings like us as humans and avoiding animal products is therefore a direct way of saying, I am no longer contributing to the suffering and the harm of these animals. So roughly 60 billion land animals and over a trillion marine animals are killed and used as commodities per year. Factory farming has taken over the industry, making up over 98% of animal products that are sold in the UK. And the stark reality remains that even if you're buying from an organic farm with grass-fed animals, they still end up at the slaughterhouse. Similarly, animals that are kept in captivity are on race fields, performing in circuses. They are all being used and exploited by humans unnecessarily. So vegans are fighting to stop this unnecessary exploitation by boycotting this industry so that animals can have the freedom that they deserve. So the third reason a lot of people go vegan is for the environment. It is shocking the impact that animal agriculture has on this planet. It's one of the biggest industries on this world and it's causing one of the biggest impacts as a result. Animal agriculture contributes more greenhouse gas emissions than all of transportation combined. It is estimated that animal agriculture is responsible for up to 91% of deforestation. Cows produce 150 billion gallons of methane per day and it takes 2,500 gallons of water to produce just one pound of beef. It's 477 for eggs, nearly 900 for cheese, and 1,000 gallons to produce just one gallon of milk. Animal agriculture is also the leading cause of species extinction, ocean dead zones, water pollution, and habitat destruction. We could see fishless oceans by 2048 if we carry on the way that we do. Now, if those facts don't shock you into reducing your animal consumption seriously, then I don't know what will. We are in a really, really pivotal point in our history where we need to change something, we need to take action, and that starts with the individual, it starts with you making a decision to not contribute to an industry that is causing so much harm. So now we've got that out of the way, what on earth am I going to eat as a vegan? I can't eat meat, can't eat fish, eggs, dairy, honey, and God knows what other ingredients I can't eat. What am I left with? Luckily, there are a lot of delicious plant foods out there that are not only tasty, but they are full of nutrients and they're full of protein. 
So the main things that you're gonna be eating now that you're vegan are fruits and vegetables, legumes, nuts and seeds, grains, plant milks, tofu and meat substitutes and vegan alternatives. We are so lucky now in 2018, there is a huge amount of vegan products available to us. When I first went vegan four and a half years ago, I was not so lucky and yeah, it's amazing that veganism is becoming more popular, that brands are listening, companies are listening and they are creating more vegan products for us. They have a whole heap of alternatives to everything nowadays so you don't have to miss out. So the main thing that I would recommend that you supplement when you go vegan is a vitamin B12, simply because you can't get this from plants. And I hear you, I hear you, there's lots of comments that are already being written up and typed up right now. If veganism is so healthy, then why do you need to supplement? So simply put, vitamin B12 comes from soil. And back in the day when we used to harvest and grow our own foods, we would have nutrient rich soil that the foods would grow in and they'd be filled with B12 for us to get our needs. Today, however, the soils are depleted and there is not just not the same amount of B12 in there. I am not a doctor or a dietitian, so please speak with them if you are considering what supplements you should take. Now we've got that all out of the way, I'm suspecting this video is gonna be a long one. It's time to get into my top tips. So the first thing is to take it easy. There is no rush. You do not have to go vegan overnight. Changing what you eat every single day, three times a day, often more than that, with friends, with family at work, it's a huge change. So please don't be so hard on yourself and don't expect that it's gonna happen overnight and it's gonna be really, really easy. You've gotta look at your own lifestyle and figure out what suits you, how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna approach this, whether that's you're gonna go vegan one day of the week, if you're gonna go vegan, over a span of the next year, you're gonna go vegetarian first. If you're just gonna try and eat more plant-based meals overall, whatever it is, if veganism is the goal, take it slowly and don't beat yourself up about it. That way you'll maintain it a lot easier. Knowledge is power. Gather all the information that you need to arm yourselves when your friends and family come to you and say, but why are you vegan? Where do you get your protein? What do you even eat? But milk isn't bad, is it? Why can't you eat cheese? When they come to you and say all these things, you will be able to talk back and explain it to them in a calm way and a knowledgeable way. Also just learning and understanding fully what is going on and being aware of it, being made aware, being opened up to the world that is the animal agriculture industry will fuel your passion. It will make you feel determined to keep this up and realize why veganism is so important today. I have linked a load of resources in the blog post again to help you learn, understand and to start your veganism journey. So thirdly is to veganize your favorite recipes. Just because you're vegan doesn't mean you can't eat things like pizza, burgers, cheese, ice cream. You can do a quick search on Google or on YouTube, type in your favorite food, add vegan on the end, and there will be hundreds of recipes for you to follow along with. Number four is to scope out your local shops and restaurants for vegan food. This is one of the first things that I did when I went vegan at university, I remember watching loads of videos about veganism one night and the next day going to Tesco, my little Tesco Metro at St Andrews University and scouring the, the shelves to try and find the vegan food that they had on offer. Back then they only had one vegan cheese and it tasted like actual feet. But luckily today there are so many alternatives. It is unreal. Every single time I go to the supermarket, there are new vegan alternatives popping up. So many chains in the UK now have vegan menus. People are being more and more accommodating because more and more people are making the switch. So when you go vegan, you're gonna have to get used to reading a lot of labels. This is a learning curve and as you become a more seasoned vegan, you won't have to read labels as much because you'll just know what's vegan and what isn't. So luckily allergens like milk, fish, eggs, they are usually highlighted in bold, so that makes it easy. So I'd recommend that you check the label for whey, casein, lactose, shellac, rennet, gelatin, carmine, anchovies, beeswax, and certain E numbers. I have linked on the blog post the e-numbers that you need to look out for. Also, don't be scared if it says may contain milk or may contain traces of milk because that is just for people with allergies. It means that the food that you're buying has been made in a factory where milk is present. So there might be a trace amount of milk in there. That doesn't mean that the product actually has milk in it. So it can be really, really frustrating when you go vegan, when you find out all this information that you previously weren't aware of, or 
you weren't tuning into and everyone around you isn't vegan or they are avidly against it. But it is important that you channel that passion into setting an example to those around you and inspiring them rather than getting angry at them. If you think about it, you were not vegan not long ago and you thought the exact same way as they did and if someone had come to you and had a go at you and told you all these things and got mad at you about veganism, you probably would have sat there and thought, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to me? Go away. So think about that and just live your life as a vegan, share the information, talk to people about it openly and don't get too angry. I have found in my own personal experience that when I've got mad about things, people just wanna lead the conversation and people don't wanna hear it. Whereas when I've been more open and more understanding, I have actually helped people to make more, more choices towards a vegan lifestyle and to a plant-based lifestyle. My boyfriend, he went vegetarian and he's now vegan. My sister and my mum no longer buy products that have been tested on animals. And my parents both eat so much less meat than they used to. And I'd like to think that that is in part due to my impact. Number seven is to get creative. Now you know what you can and can't eat. You have veganized your favorite meals and you become a whiz at reading the labels. You can get creative with your food. Plant-based cooking is a whole other world and I have definitely become a lot more creative with the way I eat and the way I cook since going vegan. I have definitely found a passion for cooking as I'm sure you can tell. There are so many flavors and so many new things that you can try when you go vegan. They're outside what you probably have eaten before in the past. So don't be shy and get trying and get tasting. Number eight is to be a part of the community. As I mentioned before, if you're feeling that passion, that anger and that frustration, it's really important to speak with like-minded people and get involved. Social media honestly was my support system at the beginning. I found so many people online who were talking about veganism, sharing recipes, sharing ideas, being an inspiration to me and I found that community. If you don't have anyone in your real life, then there is always social media. I can be here to help you. <laughs> Do a quick Google search, find out if there are any vegan festivals, any meetups, any vegan activism groups and get involved. Having like-minded people around you will not only make you feel less alone, but it will also make you feel like you're a part of something important. So I'm just gonna throw it out there, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna make a mistake. You're probably gonna eat an animal product when you didn't want to or by accident and it's okay. It is highly, highly unlikely that you're gonna make the decision to go vegan overnight and then you're never gonna touch or eat or use an animal product ever again in your life. You are suddenly changing a very fundamental part of your everyday life, the food that you eat. So it's inevitable that you're gonna mess up. You're gonna accidentally eat some sandwich that has mayonnaise in it. You're gonna have one too many drinks after work and then you're gonna accidentally devour a cheesy pizza. It's okay, it doesn't matter. Don't let anyone else, including yourself, judge you for it. If your intentions are good, then that's all that matters. Over time, as veganism becomes a part of your lifestyle and a habit, these mistakes will happen less and less and it will get a lot easier. And this leads me to my final point. Please don't give up. I've seen it time and time again where people have gone vegan and they've set themselves really high expectations and it hasn't been what they thought it would be and they've just thrown in the towel and gone back to eating meat and animal products. Leave behind unrealistic expectations and just remember what veganism is fundamentally about. It is about reducing the amount of harm that you're causing to animals and the environment around you, just lowering your impact in general. Veganism is not a fad diet, it's not a miracle cure to your health and it's not something you'll necessarily find easy. It is a lifestyle change and you should treat it as such and expect that it's gonna take time to adjust and learn. So don't give up, keep going and it will get easier over time. Whew. Oh my gosh, we're at the end now. <laughs> I just wanna say finally, good luck. I hope this video has helped you if you're thinking about going vegan or if you're making the transition. Please, in the comments, leave your questions. We can all help each other. Everybody, go down below, write your problems, write your questions, and reply to people, help them out, give each other advice. And if you want to join a community, like I mentioned before, you can join my Facebook group, Versatile Vegan. Also, I have an ebook filled with recipes, so you can also check that out. Remember what I said, to take it easy, to not be too hard on yourself. Find a way that works for you and that is appropriate to your lifestyle. I would much rather someone say that they're gonna eat one vegan meal a week than them say I'm not doing anything at all. That to me is an improvement and a step in the right direction. So keep that in mind and yeah, go vegan.
This video was brought to you by Squarespace. I recently designed my website using their platform and I absolutely fell in love. The designer templates that they have make it so much easier for you to create the look that you're after because I don't think I would have been able to create such a gorgeous website if I don't say so myself. If it wasn't for their templates and in 2018 they have loads of new ones for you to use. It's an all-in-one platform, they have award-winning 24-7 customer service and it's actually really easy for you to use your domain on Squarespace if you already own one. And one of my biggest motivators for going on to Squarespace was their online store. I really wanted to sell my eBooks on my own website rather than a third party website. And it makes it so much easier for me to manage and control and see all of my orders. The whole process for me was made so much easier using this platform. And I used this platform before I was sponsored by them. I just really, really loved what they had to offer. So I wanted to share that with you guys. So if you are interested, I've got your back. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, you go to squarespace.com slash Madeline Olivia and you get 10% off your first purchase. With all that said, go check out the beginner's guide to veganism blog post on my Squarespace website and I'll see you in my next video.